Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to move into talking about continuous random variables and one specific case of that to demonstrate these ideas. Okay, so we know what discrete random variables are, right? So we're, we're going to kind of be comparing what we've talked about with discrete to now what we're talking about with continuous. Right, but the idea, the, the big thing there, discrete versus continuous, is countability. Right? If, it's, if I can count it, it's discrete. If it's uncountable, it's going to be continuous, usually things like measurements. Right? Things like length, weight, time, whatever. Whatever kind of measurements we might see. Right? You have a certain class period to take an exam. Right? You could potentially finish anywhere from zero to say it's a 50 minute class period. Anything in between the two endpoints of that interval. Right? We could get an infinite amount of values between those two those two intervals. So the key word there when we're thinking about continuous random variables, right, is infinite. Uncountably infinite. So with discrete random variables we were working with tables and stuff like that a lot. And we can't fit an infinite amount of things in a table, right? So we're instead usually going to use a formula or a graph called a density curve. Okay, a density curve is a, is a probability model. And they come in all different shapes to model specific scenarios, right? So it could look like this. It could be a simple shape like this. That, this is actually where we're going to start simple shape like this or an even more confusing shape bimodal something like that okay they come in all different shapes and sizes but overall the area under that curve must be equal to one and it's got to stay above the x-axis right because we know again this goes back to our first two axioms of probability we know our entire sample space needs to add up to one we know we can't have negative probabilities okay so we're going to use all different kinds of math to find these probabilities Right? We could use geometry for simple shapes like you know this square, there's a, there's a triangular distribution as well. Or we might have to use more um, complicated versions of math for you know, curves like this or something. But either way, regardless of what our density curve looks like, we know the area has to add up to 1 and we picture probabilities as the area under the curve. All right, there's a direct relationship there between the area under that curve and probabilities of certain intervals on that curve. Okay, so we, we picture the overall scenario as the density curve, and we picture probabilities as areas under that curve. All right, so say that our density curve, we wanted to use it to find a probability, we call that a PDF denoted at f of x. Right, so say this was our density curve, and maybe I want to know the probability of a random variable being between two numbers, a and b. Well, that probability would just be pictured by this area here. Right, so that's how we picture it. So the, the area less than something, right, if our curve looks like this, and I wanted the probability of being less than a, it would be the area to the left probability of being greater than a the area to the to the right okay now notice so some kind of side notes here right remember with discrete random variables though yes we found cumulative probabilities like less than greater than equal to but with continuous random variables what do we know about continuous random variables there's an infinite amount of values there okay so with discrete random variables, I can assign probabilities to specific outcomes, right? But if I have an infinite amount of outcomes now with continuous random variables, right? What if, how do I, and I know, right, that my entire area has to be equal to 1? What happens when I divide 1 by infinity? Right, well that is essentially zero, right? Since we have an infinite amount of outcomes here, it's impossible to apply 
probabilities to every single one. So in the discrete case, we can do it. In the continuous case, though, we can't find probabilities of single values. Each one is essentially zero. It's negligible. All right, so that's one thing to note. So with discrete random variables, again, we had to be careful with greater than versus greater than or equal to, that kind of thing. But with continuous random variables, it's something like that versus this, these are equivalent, right? Because the equal to is essentially zero. So I don't have to be as careful when I'm doing things like using my complement rule and flipping around from greater than to one minus less than. Okay, technically my CDF still is defined as less than or equal to, but it's not as big of a deal with continuous distributions. Okay, so this these are the big differences between continuous and discrete. Right? We're using we're using graphs, we're using PDFs, density functions there, and we can't find probabilities of our, a continuous random variable being exactly equal to some number. Okay, so since there are all kinds of different density curves, right? Usually when we're working with continuous random variables where most of the time we're working with density curves that we recognize, things that we can work with. Okay, so probably the most important continuous distributions are here. Now we're going to be starting with the simplest form, the uniform distribution. Okay, but your normal distribution, which, which will be coming up in the future, right, is probably the most important distribution of, of any of them in statistics, right? The normal is crucial to every pretty much everything we're going to do moving forward. Okay, so we'll start with the uniform because it's very simple to demonstrate these ideas and then we'll move into some other distributions. Okay, so what's the uniform all about? All right, well the uniform is where we have equally likely outcomes defined on some interval from A to B. All right, we know what this shape looks like. It's just a straight line or some kind of box, some kind of rectangle there from A to B. So if we know this entire area adds up to 1, and we also know, using some geometry here, the area is equal to, and I'm just going to call this the height of that box, and we can call this the width of that box, width times height. Right? The area of a rectangle is one side multiplied by the other. Okay, so using that we can find the density function of a uniform random variable right, is always going to be 1 over b minus a. Now the CDF, so remember what your CDF is defined as, right? This is the probability of x being less than or equal to some number. Okay, so that and that's capital F of X. Alright, so that's when we have some value of X and we're finding the area to the left of it. Again, if you if you do the geometry, if you do the math and try to find the area of that rectangle, here's the formula you would come up with for less than some number. Okay, we also have special formulas here for the mean and variance. Pretty simple formula for the mean. It's just the midpoint of that rectangle. Super simple. The variance, not as intuitive here, but we at least have a nice formula for the variance. And maybe if you're interested in it, you can do the math to show that. Okay, so these are the basics of continuous random variables. Right, we're going to apply, look at an example of the uniform distribution in the future. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.